All right, welcome to another uh, Lost recap for the Weekly Hijack. Uh, from now on, or at least for the next several weeks or months, we'll be doing a slightly different format. Uh, only one episode of Lost this yeah. time, and then if you are a Once Upon a Time fan, you can listen to us on the Once Upon a Time episodes. Yeah, which will separate from this so that if you don't care about one, it doesn't matter. Right, right. So, but tonight... Uh, Hearts and Minds. Hearts and Minds, the first it, Boone episode. It was funny because it's this Boone flashback episode, but it feels almost as much of a lock episode in some ways. It does. It, it does. Um, so I heard a lot of people saying that they, they couldn't remember much of this one. So you, you didn't remember much of this I, one? I, not, not any specifics. I mean, there's bits I'm like, yeah, okay, I remember this vaguely, this Jen Hurley thing. Or I remember something about Boone being drugged out and having visions. Yeah. Or, yeah, a moment ago, Deb was saying something about how much she loves Boone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> she said he wasn't as messed up as his sister. <laughs> was like plenty that. messed up. Now, Shannon has problems. Yes. Yeah, I totally forgot this whole episode. <laughs> it was a stronger episode than I remembered it being. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, in one hand, it feels very like a transitional episode, but there's a lot of really vital... Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, but it, yeah. it's not it's not as cohesive as some episodes. Yeah, like all the there's no real central plot for everything that's not Boone related. Yeah. It's like you'll bits of Sun and Kate here. But little, there's a lot of stuff that's important. Yes. Or it becomes at least yeah, just kinda, needed to happen. It's kind of a, sh- a scatter shot episode everywhere. Yeah. It just kinda hits all kinds of little uh, bits and pieces. Okay, so like I think early, I don't remember we said it in the podcast, but at one point you said Boone and Shannon are sort of the Nikki and Paulo of season one. Yeah. Like they're just kind of there. No yeah. one really likes them that much. You're just kind of thrown in. But you just you just offended the entire Boone contingent. Of the podcast. <laughs> well, no, but I was all about to... four of them. <laughs> <laughs> what I was about to say though is that. Watching this time, it does feel like a more important piece of the overall story. Yeah, that's what I thought too. In a sense, Boone and Locke are like the uh, it's it's like a inverse of the typical like leader like Obi Wan yeah. Luke sort of thing. Where as opposed to the old mentor dying, eventually it's the apprentice yeah. that that dies. I mean, Boone is. I mean, you can see there's a lot of potential for him to grow in this episode. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel like oh, he could be a real character. And I remember that scene with Jack and Locke getting a lot of attention during, uh, like, much later in the series, yeah. like, because it has allusions to later well, they sit Jacob down, and They sit down, like, any ship yet? I'm very patient. And you're like, it It feels a lot how they filmed uh, Jacob and the Man in Black watching that uh, the Black Rock come in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, like, they, and they're a lot of patient. I mean, and which I'm sure they filmed on purpose that way. Right. Well, I... Like you said, it's it's sort of a Locke episode because it, it's like Locke calling his first disciple. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you know, he, he, he's trying to take charge of these things, and so he, he says, come, follow he, me. He, he, <laughs> this is, he's on his high horse of island knowledge in many ways, mm-hmm. which later, like, by the time you get to season two, he realizes he doesn't know as much as he thought. Yeah, nearly as much. Um, but it's interesting, too, but that it's, again, Locke really has a strong belief in making people grow through... Intense pain. You know, he did it with Charlie. Like, here, here's your heroine. You want it or not? Yeah. And then with Boone, he's basically like, I'm going to force you to understand. And I was like, how do you make this drug stuff here randomly? And I know we know all kind of junk. And then I re- remember there's a flashback. He used to be like on a marijuana farm. That's true. So he knows this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Way later. It's... Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he was like he was a drug. For a while. Yeah. yeah. And they were kind of druggies and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask, Zach, so do you think this would be a good uh, training thing for your students? Tie them up and leave them in the jungle for a few hours and see what they come up with? Uh, that'd be fun. Not drugged, though. I think that is probably a bad idea. And it's interesting, though, how much I mean, how much of that was actually the drug versus the island. Yeah, because the, I think you're right. I think the island must have – because the smoke monster himself acted very in character – yeah, and Boone would Boone's never seen the smoke monster. Yeah. No, it was I'm, very. It, I mean, he might have he might have heard stories from Kate and Sawyer, yeah. but or Kate and Charlie. And at but, first, I'm like, well, maybe this part is real. I couldn't remember. I'm like, maybe this is not the one he gets drugged up. Maybe this is real. But I thought the smoke monster has this sort of judgment thing, you mm-hmm. know, just making people really. Yeah. So it, I'm I'm right. Maybe the island helped influence. It seems the vision. that way to me. It just and yeah. it, you know, it pops up through the ground, which is something. That happens later on. Mm-hmm. 
It's it's entirely possible, especially since the monster is trying to kind of groom Locke, you know, and then yeah. if you you know, then Boone is Locke's disciple, then he's kinda of trying to groom yeah. Boone in a his weird way. So okay, the compass that Locke gives to whatever, is that supposed to say, Hey, there's just weird electromagnetic stuff on this island? Or is it like because he specifically, when he went to the hatch, you know, Locke says it's not good for me anymore. And I thought at first it's just because he knows he's communing with the island. But maybe after he's been at the hatch, the compass stops working. But that's the center of all the wicked electromagnetic stuff. And that's a fair point. <laughs> I think that's open for interpretation. It could go yeah. either way. It's possible Locke knew that it stopped working. I don't know. I don't know like, why did it's it stopped either. working or did it point to the hatch? And he knows where the hatch is now, so. I don't, yeah, that's, oh, that's true. I guess it could have pointed to the hatch because. Although, I don't know. It's a little, I'm not sure if you would do that, give it to Saeed knowing if he knew that then because he, he was still tr- kind of keeping the hatches. But, yeah, which is interesting. Like, it doesn't work for me anymore. It's just like. And then later on, you're like, "What was just being mysterious lock? Like, I know when it rains, or I thought, or did you realize it broke after you got to the hatch? I don't know. It could have because that the hatch mentions worth a lot of stuff. It's possible. I'm, I'm I'm leaning toward the former just because I don't think Locke would give Saeed something that would direct him toward the hatch. Well, I don't think it would move it there. I mean, it just it just broke the electromagnetic. But what, that's what I mean, though. If if the compass points always points towards the hatch, no, not always points towards it. Just it broke its magnetic north. Oh, well, that's what I mean, though, because if if the hatch is it has this ball of electromagnetic thing, yeah, I'm not saying it points for it. I'm just saying it. it but it, it might. Points. Oh, it could. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, moving on. Let, let's let's go to uh, let's go to Hurley and Jen here. The <laughs> compass is important in season five, actually, but that's something else. True. Okay. But. Um, Hurley and Jen, that, that was just... That was great. It's good. You got pee on it. <laughs> no! <laughs> that's like, it's like, it's comedic relief, but also character building. Comedic. Yeah. It's it, fun stuff. It's, it's nice parallel because, you know, so Hurley and Jen heal if there was ever a rift. It's been healed. You know, I don't know that there ever was one, but yeah. Hurley thought there was. Uh-huh. And then, you know, then Kate and Son have this little moment where mm-hmm. Son realizes, or Kate realizes Son can understand english and i think it's it's interesting to see sun open up like I, I i was wondering if this is the first time that we've seen sun smile to jen since they've been on the island it was one of the earlier yeah people uh, are starting to adjust to being here you know we've got a garden mm-hmm. you know they're just kind of getting used to it hurley has to he's talking about we get we got to get food you know lined up here and, and so i mean the the title is you know thematically very good and you know hearts and minds a lot there's a lot of people connecting in new ways in this episode that's true. Or figure out, or in Boone's case, figure out that, okay, I need to let go. Yeah. To bring in a very common lost theme from now on. <laughs> yep. No, a lot stronger episode than I had remembered. I mean, again, I think people tend to dismiss it because Boone and Shannon, but there are a lot, like, lots of interesting pieces, lots of good fodder for Lostpedia in here. And then you always have the, you know, the classic lo- uh, flashback twist, like, oh no, I'm not swearing you, you're just trying to rip me off. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of evil. Yeah, yeah. Shannon's weird. She 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 puts herself in purposely bad situations, which I guess is why she's uh, interested in the in the torture guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right. Any any other thoughts on this one? Silence will fall. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's hearts and minds. That's our last episode for the Claire's week. We're still gone. Claire's still gone. Um, yeah, and even we got even a little bit of Charlie in here. Yeah. And speaking of uh, Locke uh, stealing hearts and minds, even Charlie completely trusts Locke and, at this and, point. And, and I, that, that line from Charlie kind of encapsulates in ways the conflict that is Locke. Because he's like, I wouldn't trust anyone else best to get us off of that or deal with this island than Locke. Which is kind of, you know, Locke is kind of the cheerleader for the island. But simultaneously, Locke is also the guy who would tie Boone up. Yeah. And put, drug him out. <laughs> yeah. So he's this very weird combination of like, he kind of is the guy to trust, while simultaneously, you probably shouldn't trust him as far as you can throw him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think this is the frustrating thing about Locke is that he's a very complicated guy. Yeah. It, it, sometimes sometimes he's dead on, sometimes he's like, where are you coming from? What, what was it? He's a, a weeble wobble or whatever it was? Uh, you know, he's like, <laughs> a I wasn't... A weeble A weeble yeah. yeah. He's not very, you know, he said, I wasn't very, I wasn't a very popular kid. I mean, he has a lot of this insecurity while being like macho knife man. 
you know, it just, he's this ball. I mean, a lot of our characters are these contradictions. I mean, you know, we talked about Kate last week, Sawyer. Mm-hmm. A lot of these characters are very much contradictions, and Locke is one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Shannon, not so much. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean the fact that she keeps throwing herself in relationships is a horrendous. Yes. I mean, no, I mean... In a normal, in a more Okay, normal. so she's a little more than skin deep, but at the same time, yeah. she is kind it, of skin it, deep. It, it is a much more uh, real-life sort of True. contradiction as opposed to, like, you know, I'm hunting born an island, I used to be in a wheelchair sort of contradiction. <laughs> true. Very so. true. All right, so listen to us at derailedtrainsofthought.blogspot.com. That's where you can get all your episodes of the Weekly Hijack and Derailed Trains of Thought. And also iTunes or we're on YouTube. That's right. So So until next time, if you're going to listen in on Once Upon a Time, we'll see you there. This is Tim. This is Nick. Adios. Bye.